having a good reader is that they read so well, I have to interrupt them to get my point across. <laughs> they just glide right on through. <laughs> Smooth. Sailing. Damien's read three verses by the time I get take a deep breath to read say something about the first verse. It's better to slow down and process <laughs> what you're reading. Yes. Vince, same way. Have to interrupt Vince <laughs> because it's so easy for him. Be better for somebody that couldn't could, had a hard time reading and go slower mm -hmm. so we can digest. Because Paul had a reason for every word he wrote. It was, there was a spirit behind it Amen. that's full of knowledge. Yeah. And we want to read slowly enough, thoughtful enough, to get the point. You mean I should read like I do when I read Paul of Home? Yes. Which, believe me, is really slow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's <laughs> the only Whoa, way to process man. something. Whoa. <laughs> now, so I had, I had decided today, I'm going to do all the reading. Interrupt yourself. Interrupt myself. But I can't, I can't apparently, my, God has vetoed that idea. <laughs> but I can say something about the first few words. Now, we who are strong, Paul has already defined what strong is in chapter 14. He said, a, a person in the Lord that's strong sees every day alike. A person in the Lord that's strong can eat anything. Those that are weak, honor one day above another and they can't eat this food and they can't eat that food. So he's already just told us what's weak and what's strong. Now I've said my piece, y'all read all you want to. <laughs> <laughs> all right. okay. Romans 15. Now, we who are strong ought to bear with the weaknesses of the weak and not to please ourselves. Now, what? how are you going to bear with the weaknesses? What do you do? Just put up with them. <laughs> that means carry them along. Help them. Maybe they'll outgrow it. <clears throat> and not to please ourselves. You can get puffed up about Knowledge puffs up. That's what you got to be careful yeah. about. I knew if you get these young people in a crowd of people, all of them with, well, most of them, a lot of them, with the Holy Ghost, it'd be hard to get puffed up against them. Because love just takes care of that. <coughs> got to bless them, bless hey, them out of their problems a lot of times. That's how he got us out of yeah. it. Blessed yeah. us out of it. Yeah. Bless you out, man. That's what God does. I bless him out. Now, yeah, Lord. <laughs> Dude, hit yeah. me, Lord. Hit. <laughs> bless me out, Lord. Bless me out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the that's a good one. That's good enough for today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let each of us please his neighbor. Comma, comma. There's a caveat on that. To the extent that it is good for edification. I mean, you don't give in to everything. No. Right? And besides that, he's only talking about people in the Lord, the Jews who still are, feel obligated to keep those dietary laws and other things. He's not talking about Christianity, who never was of God to start yeah. with, but you can apply it to a certain extent. You, you, plead, you do, do what they want you to do only to the extent that it's, that it's edifying. Yeah. It doesn't make you a slave to every wrong spirit you come, come against. It's, uh, that's, that's the key, to the extent that it is good. You're not, you're, you're not, you're a servant. Paul said, I'm a servant. I'm obligated to everybody. I'm a servant to everybody. And he said, I'm not going to do the will of man. <laughs> yeah. There's a balance in there. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm okay with <clears throat> going to a Christian place. <clears throat> you go into a Christian place if your purpose is good. If it's good for edifying for the people. And, and if you are doing the right thing, it will be good for yeah. whoever you go to take with you. Mm -hmm. For even Christ did not please himself. Yeah, he put up, he put, he submitted to the law mm -hmm. for their good, mm -hmm. and it did good. Mm -hmm. He was already good. He was, he was bearing already. the burden of the limitations of their conscience. That's right. That's what he was doing. But as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. Yeah. The people he right. came around. 
If they hated God, they'd, they'd take it out on him. If they loved God, they'd take that out on him. And surely whatever was written before was written for our learning, so that through patience and the comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. Praise God. I've said before, after I got to know the Old Testament, after I taught it a few times, I said it sure does help you. It gives you strength to believe that this truth is the truth. Once you see the mess God's people got in in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You really was that bad, and it really is this bad. Mm -hmm. It really helps you. May the God of patience and comfort give you the same mind toward one another in Christ Jesus, so that in one accord you might glorify with one voice the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, that glorifying God with one voice, that's when you have unity. Wherefore, receive one another, just as Christ also received you for the glory of God. You mean i got to receive those Jews that don't eat good bacon sandwich like I make? That's what he's talking about, just simple stuff like that. For I say, Christ Jesus was made a minister of the circumcision for the sake of the truth of God, to confirm the promises made to the fathers. That's why he was sent to the Jews. Because God loved Abraham and promised him some stuff. And for the Gentiles to glorify God for mercy, as it is written, for this cause will I confess you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. Amen, amen, amen. And again it says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and extol him, all peoples. And again, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall arise to rule the nations. In him shall the Gentiles hope. Yeah, he knew the scriptures, didn't he? He knew the scriptures. Amen, amen, amen. He was blessed. Oh, my. Praise God through us, Lord. Praise your God through us. Amen. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you might abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, not by the law. It's what he leaves out that's most important sometimes. I'm also persuaded of you, my brothers, that you are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to admonish one another. That's a big deal, Mm. right? That's a gigantic deal right there. Can you dish it out but not take it? Wow. Wow. Nevertheless, refreshing your memory, as it were, I have written you rather boldly in some parts, brothers, because of the grace that is given to me by God, for me to be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, Mm. ministering as a priest the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. sanctify the Gentiles so their worship will be okay. Mm-hmm. He was a priest. And he was saying the Gentiles <laughs> worship is okay. And you <laughs> Jews get over it. Yeah, he was a priest. <laughs> he was a priest, yeah. 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 He's, 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 he's describing himself as a minister of the priest of the gospel. Yeah. yeah. But he, he was not a Levite. <clears throat> nope. I was saying a lot. Yeah. Oh. He was connected to the new high priest. Yes. <laughs> he was in that bloodline. He was, therefore, in Christ Jesus, I have reason to boast in things pertaining to God. <laughs> I will not presume to speak of any of the things that Christ has not wrought through me to bring about the obedience of Gentiles in word and deed. Yeah. I wonder about that many a time. We talk about things God has done, but how much has he done through us? Paul saw it. He wasn't even going to talk about something unless God had done it through him. What a man. (laughs) With mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. So as for me, from Jerusalem and beyond, as far as Illyricum, I have fully preached the good news of Christ. Striving thus to preach the good news, not where Christ is known, lest I build upon another man's foundation. He, he had the, yes. the foundation. Yeah. No wonder he didn't want to build on anyone else's. 
Amen. He, he <laughs> said in Corinthians, Second Corinthians 3, I am a master builder. Yeah. I have laid the foundation. Jesus didn't lay the foundation for this mm. faith. Yeah. Paul did. Mm. Jesus was the foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Paul yeah. laid it all out. Yeah. <laughs> he said upon the foundation of the Lord and the, and the apostles and prophets, Paul laid it all out. Mm. They were not, they, were, they didn't do it. No, the, the other apostles didn't do it. Paul did it yeah. as a wise master builder. Mm. And be careful how you build on this foundation. Yes. Right. He wasn't yes. coming behind man, was he? No. If he came behind, he had something to fix up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Plumb it up. Right. <clears throat> we'll demolish that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but as it is written, that which had not been told them of him, they shall see. And those who had not heard shall understand. <clears throat> that's what that's Paul's that's Paul's business. Yeah, yeah. That's what he to show them and to tell them something they'd never heard before. For that reason also I have been prevented many times from coming to you. I don't know I don't know the connection Because somebody else has been to Rome? Or been to other places. Yeah. Yeah. But now no longer having a place in these parts, and for many years having an earnest desire to come to you. If and when I go to Spain, I will come to you. For I hope to visit you on my way through and to be helped by you on my journey there, once I have enjoyed your company for a while. Yeah, help to you on my journey means you, you help pay for it. But now I'm going to Jerusalem to do a service to the saints. For Macedonia and Achaia... Micaiah, were pleased to make a contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. They were pleased, it is true, and yet they are their debtors. Yeah, the Gentiles are debtors to the Jews. For since the Gentiles have partaken of their spiritual things, they ought also to minister to them with natural things. Yeah. So then, when I have finished this and sealed this fruit to them, I will go on to Spain by way of you. And I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Amen. That verse 27 is a principle Paul mentioned several times in different letters. You receive spiritual things, and they're really true, and they're really of God, and you really have benefit. It's only normal to minister back. Communicate is a King James word for it. Natural things. Now I entreat you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit's love, to strive together with me in prayers to God for me, that I might be delivered. That is, I entreat you, brothers. Yeah. Pray for me. That I might be delivered from those in Judea. When I get there. Yeah. Who do not believe. That my service to the saints in Jerusalem might be acceptable. Amen. Probably means he won't be acceptable. Yes. <laughs> so that by to, the, to the, the people he's bringing it, bringing it to, yeah. So that by the will of God, I might come to you with joy, and together with you be refreshed. Mm. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. 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 That's really all the, just about all the doctrine he teaches, or the things he says. This long chapter sixteen is a whole lot. Say hello to. Oh, I got really blessed by reading that. How yeah. many people he knew and how much he, he loved them all. And they were his artists. Yeah. His life was so rich. He had so many people around him. Amen. So he wrote this letter before he went to <clears throat> Jerusalem. So when he went to Jerusalem, was that when he was putting... He got beat up pretty good, but he did get to Rome. He yes. trip to Rome. <laughs> <laughs> got a free trip. <laughs> yeah. Rome helped you. Yeah. Yeah. Transportation. <laughs> and now, to keep him alive. apparently he's never been there. Yeah. Yeah. And if he went there before he got beat up and went as a prisoner, we don't know about it. So, But Jesus spoke to him when he was a prisoner on the boat. said, don't worry about this storm. You must preach in, in, in Rome. Yeah. I guess it's, that was the first time. Romans 16. I wonder if he sent this letter by Phoebe. Because he said, I commend to you, Phoebe, our sister. I wonder if she took the letter. Romans 16. 
I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the assembly that is in Sancria. That's Corinth. That you receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints, and that you help her in whatever matter she may need of you. For she has been a patroness of many, and of myself as well. Patroness means you gave money, you supported them. Greet <coughs> Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. You know who that is? Aquila and Priscilla? Mm -hmm. Who helped uh, Apollos? They, they were there in Rome. Mm. Who have risked their own neck for my life, for whom not only I give thanks, but also all the assemblies of the Gentiles, and greet the assembly in their house. Greet my beloved Eponetus, who is the first fruits of Achaia to Christ. That's where that's where Corinth is. <clears throat> greet Mariam, who has bestowed much labor upon us. Greet Andronicus and Junia. My kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Andronicus is a man's name. Junia is a woman's name. Might be a husband and wife. But they were Jews. They've been in prison for Christ. And they had a good reputation among God's ministers. And they, they were in the Lord before Paul was. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachys. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who are of the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my kinsman. Greet those of the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, women who have worked hard in the Lord. Greet Persis, who is beloved who has done much hard labor in the Lord. Greet Rufus, who is chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. That's always been sweet to me. <laughs> Greet his old elderly mother, and she's mine too. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brothers with them. Greet Philologus and Julia, Nereus and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. The Everybody turn around and shake hands to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're here. The assemblies of Christ greet you. Amen. <clears throat> now I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine that you have learned and avoid them. For such are not serving our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. In other words, they're doing it for money. Yeah. <clears throat> and with smooth words and flattery, they lead innocent hearts astray. Like the Galatians. Your obedience is spread abroad to all men. By the way, have you thought how flattery would lead, would lead them away from the truth? Paul said to the Galatians, they speak well of you, but not for your good. Mm -hmm. They want to flatter you, so you look up to them and make much of them. And they would exclude you because you're uncircumcised so that you would look up to them. If you've got the Holy Ghost, don't let anybody exclude you. <clears throat> you're as much a child of God as Paul was. That's right. Don't let anybody exclude you. Praise God. Your obedience is spread abroad to all men. I rejoice therefore over you, but I want you to be wise concerning good and pure concerning evil. Yes, yeah, so watch out for flattery. The God of peace shall crush Satan under your feet soon. Praise God. The grace of our Lord <clears throat> Jesus Christ be with you. If anybody flatters you, it can't be any greater than you being a child of God. No. So don't listen to it. Yeah. They're trying to bring you down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you. And Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my kinsmen. I, Tertius, the one who wrote out this letter, greet you in the Lord. He got to write, can I sign this? <laughs> sure, go ahead. <laughs> 
Gaius, my host, and the whole assembly greet you. So there's a meeting in Gaius' house, a group. Erastus, the treasurer of the city, and Quartus, his brother, greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That's a wonderful man. Yes. 35 people here. <clears throat> That's something, isn't it? Wow. That's good not even to have ever been there. Yeah, we knew I wish the Lord was revealing it. who who was there when he was writing this. <laughs> you never, don't put it past Jesus. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Well, thank you, Tertius, for writing that out. For yes, us. thank you, Tertius. I want to meet you one he day. You must have prayed, man, I, God used me somehow. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> yes. I got to write that letter. Yeah, write that letter, man. Praise God. <laughs> That was a real person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was so happy to be able to sign that letter. Yeah. He was probably dumbstruck when he was done with that. But, oh, man. When they read this, yeah, they're really going to be blessed when they read this. I wonder how many times he stopped to praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Sentences. Maybe as much as Paul did along the <laughs> So Rome would have been one of those places Paul wouldn't have gone because Christ was known there. Yeah, that's Already. right. Right. But he wanted to go past Rome to Spain. Yeah. We don't know if he ever made it to Spain. Did don't he? know. Probably didn't. Just don't know. Take a good while in Rome. Oh, well. Yeah, they took care of him. Oh, yeah. Rome. He was at least two years in prison there mm-hmm. before he got to see the emperor. But being in prison in Rome, if you weren't condemned yet, was very polite. He had his own house. People could come, it was go as they pleased. It was Roman too. He was a Roman citizen, so they, they wouldn't have thrown him down in the dungeon. Mm-hmm. He was a prisoner, but he was had that liberty. They just took his passport. He took his passport. <laughs> Under house arrest, basically. But he wrote to Timothy from there, mm-hmm. told about standing before the emperor and everybody forsaken him except Luke. A different world. And and this and the form of slavery they had, if you were unless you were a condemned prisoner, condemned to the salt mines or galleys of the ships, uh, wasn't wasn't like torture. A lot of slaves were adopted. And they loved their masters. It was just a different world. That's why Paul said, if, you, if you're a slave, be a good one. Mm-hmm. If you can be free, take advantage of it. But if not, take advantage of that. That's why he sent uh, that one slave, Onesimus, back to his master. Because when he had been there, he hadn't been a very good slave. <clears throat> Ran away. There were a lot of runaway slaves. Mix in with the big crowds and big cities. The best you can. Wasn't that easy to do. But Paul sent him back when he got when he when he heard the gospel and got right with God. <clears throat> They were good slaves. They'd been like Joseph. Yeah, Joseph was a very valuable slave. And Potiphar trusted him and loved him. Took Control care of his house. house. And they would have treated him well. Yeah. Very well. You ever seen Ben Hur, that movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was a galley slave, but he was he ended up being adopted by that uh, mm-hmm. Roman officer. Loved him. That wasn't that unusual. The American form of slavery was horrific. But that's not how slavery was all over the world for all time. Being a slave could be like having a really good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. 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 Right. 
Even Paul, made, I mean, God made provision in the law if a slave didn't want to be free. Yeah. They wouldn't be a slave for this master forever. Mm -hmm. Made provision for that. It's just, it's just a, a, a cultural thing in our time to slay, say as they did. I went to a Civil War lecture in Richmond, took Rebecca up there when she was in high school. And one of the first things they said, the guy offering, arguing for the Confederacy and the Union, they're both slavery is sin. Well, who said that? Yeah, well, there it is. Certain Still forms of it, I think, were wicked. Yeah. But you did. It's just the, the time of this time in our culture and history, slavery is sin. So, therefore, Abraham was a sinner. And all those just there, goofy, no. we've evolved beyond all that. That's the attitude. But yeah. it's wrong. Yeah. Well, well, there were many, there were a number of slaves, I'm sure, in, even in the South, and they didn't want to be free. Some. Yeah. And, but but they, were, sure they, they were the ones too. treated well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. The yeah. ones that were treated right. Right. Uh, but yeah. even they, like Paul said, if you get a chance to be free, be free. Yeah. Uh, well, some even fought in the Civil War on the South Side. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, both sides. Yeah. The thing is, if you're in the, if you're free in the Lord, right. you're His slave. That's right. <laughs> Don't get away from wherever him. you and are. If you're a slave on earth, you're His free man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. You're still free. <laughs> All <laughs> earthly conditions are nothing. Nothing. <laughs> That's good. That's so good. Sure. Be content wherever you are. That's man. right. That's why what Paul told those yeah. who own slaves, he said, remember, you got a master in heaven. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you watch how you treat your slaves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't David say something like, bore my ear? Yeah. Wouldn't that, that put a ring in there? He was going to yeah. be a, he was a slave, slave to the mass. They slave put to all Jehovah. Of I don't know yeah. if David ever said that or not, did he? Yeah. I don't know. It's, good scripture. it's in the, it's in the, it's in the law. Yeah. Mm, I don't remember David saying that. He he asked God to put him on the altar. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Burn me up. Yeah. I need to get, get that animal out of the way. Put me up there. Forget my ear. Take yeah. my whole body. <laughs> All the way through. <laughs> Bore me. Yeah. Burn me up. Amen. <laughs> David was jealous of those animals that got to be put on the altar. Like Uncle Joe, when somebody used to die, my mother said he, everybody that died made Uncle Joe jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it was me. <laughs> Walking up and down the banks of the Jordan River. <laughs> you ready to cross over? Yeah. Looking for a place to cross. Oh, yeah. I always loved listening to that uh, Natalie. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> Natalie's testimony last yeah. night. Yes. That was so good. <laughs> I listened to that testimony last night, and I kept thinking about what John David said about don't. The, the answer is not even in you know what what you even, what you even think the problem is. Just step over here. The answer, step away from it. The answer is Jesus. Yeah, he's the answer. Amen. Yep. Yeah. Jesus really did something for her, mm -hmm. and she never, uh, she stayed right there where he put her the rest mm -hmm. of her life. <clears throat> there is a power and a peace that comes from knowing your place, you yeah. know? And when you talk about slavery, and I've thought a lot about that over the years, and when you can accept and really truly believe that Jesus and his Father have a place for you, Amen. even if it's enslaved, there's power and peace in that. Yes, and yes you, can, you can move forward in it and yes. be okay in it. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Yeah. So you said you're amongst a bunch of slaves. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's yeah. wonderful when he won't let us get by with anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. That's my God. That's true. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Who you're slave to. Yeah. Right. Friends of God to America are all sorts of ways and for all sorts of reasons. That's right. A whole lot of them got to hear the gospel preached. That's right. Yeah. The Holy Ghost that's is right. Like, well, thank you, God. Amen. <laughs> 
a lot of slaves were freer than their masters. Yeah, yeah. 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 The Holy Ghost, where you came from. Come on. I'm richer than you. That's right. Well, I mean, I hear all this talk about reparations. I think, well, are there, is there nothing on the credit side? Nothing. Right. From from God, he is no benefit at all. Right. Uh, I think not. <laughs> How many of them got on their knees crying out to uh, God? I don't know. Them up. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them with the spirit. <clears throat> I've probably got ancestors who hated the British in Ireland right. for what they did, but I'm sure glad they left and went to Australia. Yeah, and forgot yeah. about all that. Stuff. Amen. We got away. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care what the <clears throat> British did two hundred years ago or not. No. The first time I read with homeschoolers that book called Uncle Tom, when I finished, it was like, I wish somebody would call me an Uncle Tom. I like that guy. I bet he had the Holy Ghost. Yeah. yeah. I, like I mean, it's I a know. wonderful spirit that man had. Faith in God. Mm-hmm. Praise God. In every situation. Every right time. attitude toward everybody. And he wasn't treated right. But... He was like Uncle Joe. You're not mistreated. You're just treated. God's in charge. Mm-hmm. He's everything. Amen. Everything. I mean, I, I fell in love with that guy. I bet there were a lot of slaves just like him mm-hmm. that knew that God had put him there for a reason. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I, and it also let me know how ignorant people are when they're when they're angry and calling people Uncle Tom's in a bad spirit for a bad reason. Like, good grief, Uncle Tom was great. Yeah. It's all, it's all wrong. Everything on this planet is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. One thing right back to the beginning. Right back to God's the going to judge it all. Yeah. Only he can figure out. He already has. That's right. Yeah. Well, a lot of times, yeah. even when they worked in the field, they were singing hymns. Yeah. They'd be singing. Yeah. I was working with China, America, and, and they had a group of people in that area and uh and they work in a rhythm they had it where they work with tobacco and rhythm well, and i'll tell you what some of those things really help work oh yes. i know yes. Yes. Singing I know. while you work. i was shoveling some thick heavy icy snowy stuff off my roof in henderson i was afraid it was going to collapse really it was in danger and i started singing one of those old spiritual hymns I felt like I could shovel the whole house off. <laughs> <laughs> it was really a good help. Yeah. I was singing, sign me up, sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. I want you to write my name, write my name on the roll. By this time, I was flying. <laughs> Where's the rest of that? Uh, Sign me up, sign me up for that Christian jubilee. I want you to write my name, write my name on his roll. I've been changed, I've been changed since the Lord lifted me. I want to be Ready when Jesus comes. Yeah. Jesus come. yeah. When Jesus comes. Oh, Jesus come. You know, that trumpet's going to sound so loud. When he comes. You know, the dead in Christ will rise. I can't remember the rest of it. Man, I'm Man. Just, that's a good working song. Yeah. <laughs> Looking for another roof. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> you want to shovel your house off? <laughs> Help your neighbor. <laughs> you <sing it>. Woo! <laughs> <clears throat> that's where we lived in Henderson.